See, people want the fire, but they want to be able to control it. You know, they want to look dignified and, you know. Well, let me tell you something. Sometimes God will have you do some things that don't look like it's dignified. Like run around. I remember Sister Mary used to hop on one foot and kind of twirl. But I want to remind you also, uh, I was reminded to remind you of the race that's going to be taking place from 11 to about 2 on County Street around that area down there. So you, if you, it's best just to go down out of here, take a right. If you're parked over here, just take a right and then go left and go onto Route 18 and go home that way. That's the best way. Or follow somebody if you don't know how to get out of here. Amen. <clears throat> I'm torn between two messages this morning. But I'm going to go with what I believe the Lord had for me to give you this morning. I want to talk to you today about the great tribulation period. Now, I know that there are those who are skeptics those who say this is not going to happen. But I want you to understand, and we say this often, the Lord's coming. We all say that the Lord's coming. But sometimes we say it so flippantly. Yeah, the Lord's coming. Well, if the Lord's coming, why are you living like you're living? If you believe in the imminent return of Christ, why are you living the way you're living? Why are you allowing things and not changing things in your life? Why aren't you on fire for God? Why are you so lukewarm? If you really believe in the return of Jesus Christ, well, maybe because there's some faulty, short-circuited beliefs that you may have. <clears throat> if you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, because we become lazy Christians by depending on the thing. Sometimes I, I just say, you know what, I might do away with that. Your Bibles don't belong in your car. They don't belong in your bed. They don't belong. They belong with you. I bet you not one single person left this morning without their phone. Because you're so important, you know, you're VIP people, you know. But how many left without their Bible? Come on. Say, ouch me if it applies. I want you to turn with me to the Gospel of St. Mark. You'll find the same scriptures in Matthew and Luke, but I want to go to Mark this morning, and I want us to look in chapter 13. I found something very interesting, and I focused this morning on this one little phrase in this scripture. I'm going to read it all. I'm going to read uh, verse 14. Well, maybe I can have somebody come read it. Who would like to come up here and volunteer to read this for me? Matthew 13, starting with verse 14. I'm sorry, Mark 14. Uh, thir Mark 13. Stop getting me confused now. Mark 13, verse 14. That's what I said. 14 to... Verse 23. Mark 13. One, three. Who would like to come up and read it? Don't all rush up on the platform all together now. While you're coming, I'm going to invite those that are watching by Facebook. God bless you. Nice to have you with us. Sister Linda up in Maine. God bless you. Sajeev up in India. And anyone else that might be watching and tuning in this morning. God bless you. We're glad that you could join us. Who's going to come up? You're going to come up? <clears throat> well, you never know. From verse 14 to verse 23. Okay. Everyone, please excuse my cold and my uh, raspy voice, but here's God's word. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, 
spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not. Let him that readeth understand. Then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. And let him that is on the house, on the housetop, could not go down to the house, neither enter therein, to take anything out of his house. Let him that is in the field not turn back again, for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in winter. For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation, which God created unto this time, neither shall be. Except that Lord had shortened those days, no flesh shall be saved. For the elect's sake, him who hath, he has chosen, he hath shortened the days. And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. For false Christ and false prophets shall arise, and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye hold, heed, behold, I foretold you all things. Amen. Thank you. Verse 20 is what stuck out to me this morning. I had gotten up early and I, I was looking at this and I said, Lord, what are you trying to show me? In verse 20 it says, And except the Lord had shortened those days. That's an interesting phrase, Scripture. Except that the Lord had shortened those days. How does the Lord shorten a day? There's 24 hours in a day. Ever wonder about that? How is the days shortened? What days is he talking about? Well, if you go back in, in chapter 13 to uh, uh, verse um, 5, it says, Jesus was answering them. He, he said, Take heed lest no man deceive you. Many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, and shall deceive many. When you shall hear of wars, rumors of wars, be not troubled. <clears throat> For such things must be need, must need be, but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there, ki and there shall be, this is the part I want you to understand. There shall be what? In diverse places. Now, as I was reading verse 20, God brought that verse to my mind. And I looked at it and I said, there shall be earthquakes. So, except the Lord had shortened those days. Now, I don't know about you, but I think three and a half years is a long time. Don't you? We understand that the great tribulation is going to happen in the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. And I'm sure it does apply to that, but I believe it also applies to something else. I found this article, and it says, the usurpage in big earthquakes predicted for 2018 as the earth rotation slows. Scientists have warned that there could be a big increase in the numbers of devastating earthquakes around the world next year. This was written in 2017. They believe, <clears throat> listen to this, they believe variations in the speed of the Earth's rotation could trigger intense seismic activity, particularly in heavily populated tropical regions. Although such fluctuations in rotation are small, changing the length of the day. Did the little light bulb go on? This is happening now. This is happening now. 
He says they found five periods that have been significantly high numbers of large earthquakes compared with other times. In these periods, there have been between 25 and 30 intense earthquakes a year. The rest of the time, the average is between around 15 major earthquakes a year. But they found that when the earth begins to slow itself down, that there's an increase, not only in the amount, but also in the power of those earthquakes. Isn't that interesting? <clears throat> now we understand and we know that in the context of this scripture, now I've had arguments with people all day long on, on this and Matthew and Luke and this here. And they say, see, that proves the church is going to be here during the tribulation. I said, well, that's because you have a faulty interpretation of Scripture. And then I begin to explain to them, first of all, that when these things take place, Jesus said, and you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, standing where he ought not, we understand that to be the temple. You read in Daniel chapter 9, you'll see about the Antichrist, how uh, he's going to come and He's going to defile the temple. So there has to be a temple being, that has to be built. I want you to know there's already in legislation in Israel, already before whatever they have there, like our government, <clears throat> an approval for the building of the third temple. They already have it. It's already been approved. Most of the High priest garments have already been made. They have located some of the artifacts of the tabernacle. And even Perry Stone is saying that he has inside knowledge that Israel has found the Ark of the Covenant. They're not telling anybody where it is. But he said they have it, it's secured. It's guarded. They even have the animal sacrifices getting ready to come back again. So you animal enthusiasts, you're going to be a little upset with Israel. Because when they do a blood sacrifice, it's by the thousands. Now, we understand that the, the blood of animals and goats cannot wash away sins. We understand that. <clears throat> but they're going to do that. Exactly why decreases in day length should be linked to the earthquake is unclear. They don't understand that. They can't understand that. How many know science don't know everything? If science knew everything, they'd be gone. But I found this article very, very interesting that the Earth's rotation actually shortens the day. And Jesus said, except those days be shortened. Those days, what days? When you see the kingdoms rising against kingdom, nation against nation. We see that now. Pestilence, we see that now. Famines, we see that now. You, I was just looking at uh, Venezuela. How many have seen that on, on Venezuela? The people in Venezuela are actually camping in, the, in the, um, the garbage heaps, and that's where they're getting their food. There's such a food shortage in Venezuela right now. The economy is in the toilet. They, 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 can't, they don't have enough food. It's happening right now. He, Jesus was here talking to Jewish believers. How many agree with that? Well, if you don't, look at verse 3. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives against the temple. Here comes Peter, James, John, Andrew. <laughs> and they asked him a question, so he's, he's answering them. He's in dialogue with them, and they asked the question, and in this particular portion of Scripture, he's telling them 
what's going to take place. Now, we know that he's talking here at this specific time, not to the church, because I believe that the church is already raptured. I believe the church is a pre-tribulation rapture. Now, how do we justify that? Would you put Matthew 24, verse 20 up for a moment? How do we know that he's talking to the Jews? He says, but pray you that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. The only ones that are observing the Sabbath day are the Jews. This is the same scripture, same reference to what's happening in Mark. So we see he's talking to the Jewish believers. And he's telling the Jewish nation, these things are going to happen. And he says in verse 19, For in those days, there's that phrase again, those days, shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of, of creation. Wow. He's saying that in these days, in these days, and these things begin to take place. They're like birth pains. He said, but when these things begin to take place, he said that this is going to be, these days of affliction will be as such as not from the beginning of creation, which God created until this time, neither shall there be any after that greater than this time of affliction. See, everybody, everybody's looking for a brighter new future. The world's looking for a new world order. They're looking for a new, a new heaven and a new earth right here. I believe the IMF, International Monetary Fund, has come out with a, a monetary uh, um, currency that they want all the world to accept as one currency. And they're trying to get the dollar in it, but they're fighting that. But they're trying to fight that. So you have a one world currency. You have, I don't mean to offend anybody, the Democratic Party, the extreme left of that, I'll say it that way, are trying to bring us into a place of socialism, a place where we turn our military powers and our sovereignty over to the one world court. These are happening now, folks. In our time. These are things that are happening now. In our world. For in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of creation. You mean to tell me the flood? It's going to be greater? The sorrow? It's going to be greater than Sodom and Gomorrah? Greater sorrow? Greater pain? For the Jews that had suffered in Egypt under pharaohs, many pharaohs, for the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, and slavery and bondage, it's going to be worse than that? Yes. But here's the kicker. It's going to come under the guise of peace. When the Antichrist comes into power, the Bible says for the first three and a half years of the tribulation, it's going to be a time of covenants and peace. And the covenant he's going to make with Israel and the peace he's going to make with Israel. But then in the middle of that three and a half year period, he's going to break that covenant.
It's known as the time of Jacob's trouble. You find that in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Look, let's look at that, Jeremiah 30, verse 7. Jeremiah 30, verse 7. Let me get that up on the screen. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. Who is Jacob? His name was changed to Israel. It's a time of Israel's trouble. Not a time for the church's trouble. It's a time for Israel's trouble. And in verse 20 says, And except the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake. That word elect in the Greek it means chosen. Who's, God, who's God's chosen people? Israel. Amen. Israel was around long before the church came into existence. That's where people make the mistake and say that the elect is the church. The elect is not the church. The elect is Israel. My chosen, he says. And if any man shall say, lo, here is Messiah, that's what Christ means, or lo, he is there, believe him not. For false messiahs and false prophets shall rise and shall show great signs and wonders to what? <clears throat> to what? To seduce. The Bible says many in the last days shall fall away from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. I read something the other day. I was kind of shaking my head. I said, well, I'm not surprised. <clears throat> and I don't want to offend anybody, but The Pope says that the United States has it turned over its sovereignty to the, to the World Union, European Union, for the better of all the nations. That was the other day. So you have the Vatican pushing for a one-world government, which means it will be a one-world church. You have evangelicals that now are coinciding with Muslims, and in the churches, listen to me now, in the churches, not the mosques, the churches, they're reading the Quran and the Bible on an equal platform. You have this word tolerance that is so spread now. To be tolerant of the religion. We've got ministers that are saying that the Muslim faith is just as valid as the Christian faith. Does anyone believe that? It can't be. Christianity is the only one where the founder was killed, crucified, buried, raised from the dead, Ascended up to heaven and is coming back again. It's the only religion in the world that can claim that. And not in a not in a hypothetical way, but in a literal way. Because there have been witnesses over five hundred that saw Christ after his resurrection. The apostle Paul saw Christ 
after his resurrection. Those that went to the tomb and had the angels appear to them and said, he is not here, for he is risen. Either they lied, and if they lied, they can't be angels in heaven. They've got to be angels that have been fallen. Where they would nowhere be, a, be assigned to that. He says, but take heed. Behold, I foretold to you all these things, all things. I've told you. See, a lot of people think, you know, with the economy now changing, it's going to be wonderful, it's going to be great, and, you know, it will be for a short time. But Scripture has to be fulfilled. Are you hearing me? No matter how much you want to hope, no matter how much you want to pray, no matter how much you want to fast, you are not going to change. See, there are things that God will change. Okay, if you pray, if he's going to if he's going <clears> to <throat> do a, a certain thing and you pray and if it's in his will to change it, he'll change it. But uh, there are certain decrees that he's made and, and he may delay that decree. But ultimately, that decree that he has made is going to come to pass. You can't change it. You can't have a world prayer summit and say, OK, we're all going to pray that the Antichrist won't come. Not going to happen. You can, you can be delusional if you want to, but that's not going to happen. He is going to come. He may even be alive today. <clears throat> but the great tribulation is not for the church. If you look in Revelation, you'll find that during this time, there was a cry in the heavens and the earth for someone who was found worthy to unroll the scrolls of the wrath of God. And it says they looked through all of heaven and all the earth and they had found no one. And I love this word, except. Except the one who was from the tribe of the Lion of Judah. Notice it didn't say lamb. It says, of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now, if you read anything about the Roman Empire, and they used to have the Colosseum, they never put well-fed lions in those arenas. They may have starved that lion for about three or four days. And guess what they did? They would put Christians in that Colosseum. And they'd let the lions out. And those lions were not merciful. They tore upon their bodies and ate that meat. But the lion of the tribe of Judah... Because he's a loving and a caring and a just God is giving the people exactly what they want. They want wealth. They want peace on earth. They want a one world religion. They want a one world government to be governed so that we don't have to worry about war. We don't have to worry about People's opinions about God, that everyone, new ages, are included. That's from the pit of hell. There's only one truth. There's only one way. There's only one life, and that's through Jesus Christ. I'm not being prejudiced. I'm just telling you what the Word says. Jesus said it. He said, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man, say it with me, no man, comes unto the Father except through me. You can't go through Buddha. You can't go through Muhammad. You can't go through Catholicism. You can't go through Protestantism. You can't go through the Episcopal Church. You can't go through any church. 
You can only go through Jesus Christ. <coughs> That's why the Christian faith is unique. One of its kind. There's none other like it. I'm not talking about the denominations. I'm talking about the relationship with Jesus. He said, take heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. He starts it off with, don't let any man deceive you. Don't let the Pope deceive you. Don't let the... That's the way I can put it. Half-baked Protestant minister. Fool you. Don't let these liberal theologians that have taken over our seminaries today fool you. Don't let anyone, I don't care what their degrees are, I don't care what affiliation they have in, in, the, in the, uh, 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 the evangelical circles. I don't trust them. You say, Pastor, you don't trust them? No, I don't. When you have a president of a theological seminary. Think about this now. Evangelical. John MacArthur. Well-renowned. Has a program, Grace to You. Has a program on TV. I'm not saying everything he preaches is bad. But he said this, and he's misleading his people. That you can receive the mark of the beast and still get saved. Now that's, that's someone who's a who's got a doctorate degree, well-knowledged, yet so stupid. Because if he would read the very scripture in Revelation that he quotes about the mark of the beast, if you read a few scriptures down, it says, those that receive that mark shall receive eternal damnation forever and ever, and the smoke of them shall rise up to heaven forever and ever. Even people in leadership in churches are leading people straight to hell because they're afraid to tell the truth or they've been deceived to the truth. I'm sure there's going to be people talking about me. Well, you think you're the only one? No, I don't think I'm the only one. I know there's a thousands and thousands of more that don't believe that you can take the mark of the beast and be saved. When you take the mark of the beast, you're giving over your soul to Satan. You have his mark on you. Hello? So I know this preacher here will never be found guilty when you all stand before God and say that I never told you the truth if you receive the mark of the beast. God will play this tape on this day right before your eyes and, and show you, and you'll hear my voice, telling you exactly the same thing, and he'll, he'll say to you, you were sitting there and you heard this message. Don't tell me you didn't know, even those on Facebook. This great tribulation is the next event that's going to take place that the world will participate in. But before that, before that, there's another event that's going to take place. It's the catching of the way of the saints. It's when the church of Jesus Christ will be raptured up before this great tribulation period. I can hear the voices now. Oh, pastor, what about if it's mid-trib? It's not pre-trib. I say just be ready. I believe it's going to be pre-trib. I believe this scripture has nothing to do with the church hanging around here. In context. I haven't found anybody to tell me different. They can have their opinion. But you've got to read it in context. Who he was talking to. Why was he talking to them? Does that mean that all those Christians all over the world, when we see these things, are going to get in a plane and go to Judea? 
Hello? No. He's talking to the Jews because he's going to preserve. See, there's a lot of anti-Semitism going on. There's a lot of anti-Jews. The people hate the Jews. Do you understand the nations, Syria, Libya, Turkey, Iraq, uh, 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 Arabia, Egypt, Damascus, all those nations are surrounding Israel? You look at it in the map, Israel's only this big. That's prophesied that was going to happen. Zechariah prophesied that. And when you see Israel surrounded by these nations, you've got Iran who is t telling us they want to see the Jews annihilated. Go back into the 40s when Hitler was alive. His goal was to eliminate the Jews because they were subhuman. And he killed over 6 million Jews thinking he was going to get rid of them. But God always has a remnant. He always has a Schindler. Come on. There's always a Schindler somewhere that preserved. There was a Cory Ten Boom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was someone that would preserve them under the hand of God's direction. And you will not, and you, I'm telling you, you will not see the elimination of Israel. Remember the time in, in Scripture where they said, we're not fighting men, we're fighting God. David said, who are these uncircumcised Philistines that defy the army of God? Not the army of Israel, the army of God. See, there's a power behind Israel. I could tell you story after story of when I've read how the miracles that took place on the battlefield with Israel. How about the Six-Day War? Six-day war. Do you know it ended the day before the, before the uh, Sabbath? Come on. 1947, Israel became a nation. Now we have a president that has declared that Jerusalem shall be the capital of Israel. Do you understand what that means? With Jerusalem being the capital means that, that that city is under the direction and the hand of Israel now. And that, oh, come on. That gives them the right to rebuild this temple. Amen. They're going to rebuild the temple. You're going to see it in your lifetime. Is going to come. I believe we're living in these days. And my question to you this morning is, are you ready to receive the fire of the Holy Ghost? You're going to need the fire of the Holy Ghost because he says, as you see these things happen, things are waxing worse and worse. There's going to be more earthquakes with more devastation. There's going to be more sickness, more pestilence, <clears throat> Hello? More violence like you haven't seen before. More killings. More robberies. More rapes. More and more and more. And the worse that it's getting, I don't understand how these people want to take our guns away. Adolf Hitler said this. If you want to defeat a nation, take away the people's rights to bear arms. That's how you defeat a nation. But can I tell you, God's got an army marching through the land, deliverance in their soul, and healing in their hands. Hallelujah. We have a sword that is greater than any atomic bomb, greater than any nuclear explosion, we have this word. Hallelujah. Can somebody give me a good amen? We have the word of God. Hallelujah. He said when these things happen, he says they're going to bring you before courts and kings. They're going to bring you before these, these places. Talking to Israel. Talking to the believers 
that will be believers and be Jews at that time, but they'll be believers in Israel. You know, there's been a great influx in Israel of people returning back to their homeland. They're coming in, I think, two or 3,000 per day, coming back to Israel, coming back to Israel, coming back to Israel. When they get off the plane, they kiss the ground in tears, being able to come from some of these, these God-forsaken countries that now are releasing them because they don't want them. They don't want the Jews anymore. And they're coming back to Israel. And they're getting on the ground, and they're kissing the ground. <clears throat> I'm telling you, Linda and I saw, literally saw Scripture being fulfilled. The Bible says that in the, in the city of Jerusalem, the children shall dance in the streets. Linda and I saw that. Unsupervised. Among all of the, uh, Philist uh, the uh, Palestinians and the Muslims and all that was going on, little kids, four, like five, six, seven, eight, around that age, with their school books in their backpacks, no supervision, walking to school, walking back from school, walking around the city, dancing, playing, throwing the ball, no supervision. That's how safe Israel is. We could learn from them. Absolutely. The great tribulation is coming. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Because if you're not, you know the Bible says that there will be one that will be taken and one will be left. And the reason why? They had no oil in their lamps. They did, but they wasted their life. They wasted, and the things of this life will drain your oil. Hallelujah. So if you don't want to be left behind, because if you're left behind, you will be going through all this. All this stuff right here, you'll be going through. You're going through persecution such as the world has never seen. You're going to go through affliction such as the world has never seen. I'm giving you this to get you to think about where you are with Christ right now and where you need to be. Not where you should be, where you need to be. Because you can walk out of this place and still be thinking, well, that's where I should be and still be the same. Because this video is going to be played in heaven. And you have no excuse. None. Zero. Zappa. None. No excuse. None. Do you have oil in your lamp? Or is your lamp filled with this world and the philosophies and the cares of this world? you spend more time in the world than you do in God? you spend more time with the things of this world rather than with God? If you do, it's draining your oil. You don't even know it. <clears throat> one of the saddest, and I'll close with this. One of the saddest scriptures I've ever read in all of my life is one with Samson and Delilah. The Bible says when he woke up, now, first of all, he was in a place he shouldn't have been. He was with a person he shouldn't have been with. Hello? But people want their own will, their own stubborn will, that old idolatrous will. When he woke up, the Bible says this. When the Philistines came in upon him, he did not realize that the presence of the Lord had departed from him. He didn't know. Someone who fought the battles for the Lord, someone who was in the firing line for the Lord, stood up for the Lord many times and fought great tremendous battles for Israel, defeated the Philistines. Yet because he allowed this thing in his life, he didn't know, he didn't have discernment to know that the presence of the Lord had departed from him.
It would be nice if we had dipsticks to find out how much oil we have. If we could put a little stick there and go in spiritually and kind of pull it out and see where we, where we are. But you know what? We do. We do have a dipstick. It's called your life. What you value the most is your dipstick, is my dipstick. How much oil do you have? I know I can use this illustration because Joe's telling me that he's got a little leak with his power steering, right? Now, just think, if you just let that drain and drain and drain, what's going to happen? His, his steering wheel sounds like this. Right? But when it's nice and smooth, all you hear is the tires. Little rubber hitting the road. You don't hear no. Who was it? Somebody here let the car go down with no oil in it. Who was it? I forget. Somebody here, I, I know that they had no oil in their car. It was Kathleen. No oil. Wondering why the car's not running right. It wouldn't run at all. Let me ask you a question. How's your engine running? How's your heart running? How's your life running? Are you putting God first in all that he says and does? You know what? Can I say this? Sometimes we look at God and we think he's delaying things. But he's not delaying He's waiting. You know what he's waiting for? He's waiting for us. See, we don't believe the scripture. This is what the scripture says. Seek ye first the what? The kingdom of self. What does it say? The kingdom of God and what else? And his righteousness. And then what happens when you do that? All the things that you need will be added to you. But can I tell you, if you don't put him first, you're going to experience delay after delay after delay. And it's not that God doesn't want to honor that prayer. It's not that he's delaying it. It's, he's waiting on you to put him first. When you put God first and his kingdom and his righteousness, all that other stuff is added to you. You're not going to all that stuff's not going to be added before. So it's up to you. Where's your oil? God is reaching down today with his dipstick. And he's measuring your life and your oil today. Where's your oil? What's your oil level? If we're living in these last days, and we are, and if the Antichrist is coming, and he is, and the great tribulation is about to unfold upon this earth, and it will, where's your oil level? You need to put everything and anything aside and put God first. He will not, he will not, he will not accept second. You can't have a second God and have everything else first. He said, I am a jealous God. Amen. Come on, don't, don't look so sad at me now. There's good news. And that good news is this. He has plenty more oil. Hallelujah. You don't even have to purchase it. He's given it out for free. I know we used to sing this song a long time ago. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. 
Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning, 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 keep me burning till the break of day. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna. See, when you have oil, you want to sing. When you have oil, you want to praise. When you have oil, you want to read. When you have oil, you want to pray. So how's your oil level this morning? Let's bow. Heavenly Father, we pray right now, God, that you will, by your Spirit,